Welcome back to Teach English Now. So far, we have discussed how learning a language can be a delicious experience, but that teachers can hurt that experience without proper technique. In the next few videos, we will consider several techniques to break down information and make meaning clear so that your students will ultimately progress. Please understand, if you can't make information simple and understood, there is no way that students will be able to learn. Now, let's talk about good teacher technique in general. I am sure that if we gave you a minute, you could think of great teachers you have had who used all kinds of techniques to communicate information clearly. Your great teachers probably used whiteboards, PowerPoint presentations, diagrams, hey, maybe even metaphors. All of these, when done well, can help foster communication and make meaning clear. In fact, whether your teachers knew this consciously or not, they were probably presenting information that was just right for your brain to process. They were teaching within a zone that was not too hard and not too easy. As Lev Vygotsky, a Russian psychologist, explains, teachers should be aware of three different learner zones. One, what the learner can already do. Two, what the learner cannot do. And three, what the learner can do with guidance from the teacher. This third zone he calls the zone of proximal development. I call it the sweet spot, because cake is the most delicious when you are teaching within this zone. Stephen Krashen, an ESL theorist, has a similar theory called the input hypothesis. This hypothesis states that learners need to receive input that is just beyond their current understanding in order to grow. Just a little bit hard, a little bit new, so to speak. He calls it I plus one, meaning input plus new information. Can you see how this resembles the zone of proximal development? Now, let's talk about what happens when you don't teach in the sweet spot. Here's a brief story. A few years ago, I taught in two places, at an English school and at a university. One of my students from the English school asked if she could visit a class I taught to university students. She was a very smart young woman, but had only been studying English for the past three months. And so she was a beginning English student. She was doing fantastic, and I loved to see her smile in class as she answered every question. When she asked to visit my upper level university class, I said, of course. She came early and was smiling. However, as I began speaking, I remember how quickly her smiles turned into frowns. She told me afterwards, when you are teaching in my class, I understand everything you are saying, but in your university class, I felt like you were speaking a different language. For this visiting student, I was speaking too fast and using language too complex for her to understand. Krashen calls this I plus 10, indicating the input, at least for now, is out of the student's range of understanding. On the other hand, maybe you have encountered the opposite problem. Welcome to Animals 101. Please repeat after me. This is a dog. 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 This is a cat. 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 In this situation, you understand all the concepts the teacher is explaining, so it is, simply put, boring. Krashen calls this I plus zero, meaning the input is completely understood by the student and no learning is taking place. So, in summary, we don't want to share information that is too high, and we certainly don't want to share information that is too low. 
We want to provide information at the I plus one level. Just new enough that it is challenging, but not so hard that it is overwhelming. You have to find that sweet spot and help students by breaking down information, going the correct speed, and using techniques to help students understand concepts that, without you, they would not understand. I will now present three different techniques to help you reach students better, starting with the first technique, body language. This technique could be what students in the Ambadi and Rosenthal study were noticing when they were observing teachers. There is so much a teacher can do to help learners understand through the use of hands, eyes, and movement in a classroom. In fact, some researchers put the level of nonverbal communication as high as 80% of all communication. Albert Morabian is noted for finding a 7, 38, 55% rule, supposedly denoting how much communication is conferred by words, tone, and body language. And did you know that in the language classroom, a teacher who turns his or her back from the students while talking is three times more likely to be misunderstood than a teacher who faces the students. This is because most nonverbal communication comes from the arms and the face. Body language and movements can also be used to help students make connections with specific vocabulary. I'll never forget when my Spanish teacher, who knew I was going to Venezuela, taught me a particularly Venezuelan Spanish word. It is a word that means to go forth or to move forward with strength and ambition. The word is palante. To go forward. What a great visual to help me remember the meaning of the word. Palante. While body language is a simple technique to understand, please take a minute to recognize that body language is an essential integral and necessary part of your teaching. Thanks for watching Teach English Now. And remember to never go back and always pa'lante. See you next time.